this is Jim Lucan of Jim Lucan Outdoors and I'm out here today in front of actually in back of my bog garden and what I want to do with this video today is I want to show you how you can make a bog garden like this in your backyard and enjoy the wonders of carnivorous plants um, this bog garden is uh, in a big cattle tank and I've got pitcher plants, I've got Venus flytraps, I've got all kinds of, of native carnivorous plants in here. And it really is a, uh, a, a real joy to come out here and, and watch this thing change and develop through time. So watch this video and I'll show you how you can make your own bog garden. Before we go any further, a little disclaimer. All of these plants that you see in here, I've grown from seed um, I have uh, so many plants that produce so much seed, I don't know what to do with all the seed. And so what I want to make clear right from the beginning is no plants were collected from the wild to make this bog garden. I basically uh, propagate these plants myself and I end up with more seed than I know what to do with. And I give them or sell them to, uh, to other people. And so most importantly, no wild plants were harvested in any of these uh, photos of these uh, various bog gardens. Now if you look closely in here, um, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of Venus flytraps, many of them uh, in flower right now, which is pretty cool. Um, I've got the uh, hooded pitcher plants, I've got green pitcher plants, and if you look down here, here carefully, you'll see little seedlings and small plants that have uh, that have taken hold from seeds produced within this bog garden. So if you get this thing going, it'll uh, it'll perpetuate and you'll end up with more plants than you know what to do with. This one is in a big cattle tank. I sunk it partially in the ground and then went around the edge with these stones just to make it look good. But uh, you can uh, you don't have to uh, uh, basically put these into the landscape. You can let them uh, sit out. But most importantly, um, when you place your bog garden somewhere, it needs to be in full blazing sun. These carnivorous plants need full sun to do well, so make sure where you land your bog garden, it gets full or almost full sun um, a lot of the time during the day. Okay, we're going to make this bog garden using these, uh, these big plastic cattle tanks or horse tanks you can get these things at farm supply places this one's a this one's 40 gallons they come in like 40 80 120 um the bigger your bog garden the more consistent will be the soil moisture and the less you'll have to worry about the thing drying out so i'd go as big as you can go this is a relatively small one the big one up there that I showed you at the beginning of the uh, video, I think that's 120 gallon. Um, these things are, of course, sealed on the bottom. No drainage. A little bit later, I'm going to show you. Maybe you'll drill, drill one drain hole in the side in case the rain comes and fills it up with water. The water can at least drain out. But no drainage holes in the bottom. You want these things to hold water so the peat remains perpetually moist. So let me talk very quickly about what sort of growing medium is best for these carnivorous plants in a bog garden. This stuff right here. Pure sphagnum peat moss. You can get this in the big box stores. Comes in these square bales. Use this and only this pure sphagnum peat moss. No potting soil, no perlite, no soil amendments, definitely no fertilizer straight sphagnum peat moss. Get yourselves a couple of bales of this, which will uh, bring the level of the peat about up to the top of your bog garden, and you're good to go. And I'll show you how to get this stuff to the right moisture level for growing your plants. So one of the biggest challenges with using this peat moss to make a bog garden in these tanks is how you get the peat moss properly hydrated. And so this stuff, when it comes in the bag, is pretty much dust dry. And so what you got to do is you have to get this stuff fully hydrated. And it's kind of a challenge, but let me show you what I do. Um, basically, you just 
you dump this stuff into your bog garden like that and then you begin the process of getting it hydrated and wet and this stuff holds an incredible amount of water so you really got to work hard to get this stuff fully hydrated and you can't just spray water on it you got to get in there and actually stir it and mix it around and I know it seems like I'm adding way too much water but I'm not and so what you're hoping to get here is a is something that's completely and totally filled with water and as this stuff hydrates it will expand just keep working it and working it and you'll see it start to kind of change in texture and of course it'll expand and take up more volume you can't get it too wet all right I think you should be able to see now it's kind of changing texture and once you kind of get it to that point um, just let it sit a bit so that water can can be absorbed by those uh, those peat cells okay and uh, that's probably the most strenuous part of this whole process all right so let's refresh our memories two days ago i came out here and added this peat to this uh tank mixed it all up got it fully hydrated and then i let it sit for about two days um and the difference between this hydrated peat now and two days ago is quite phenomenal um as a result of this stuff sitting for a couple days it's now solid it's packed down fully hydrated this is the kind of situation you want for now transplanting into it some of your carnivorous plants so uh, let's uh, let's put some plants in here and see what happens all right, for this bog garden here that we're making, I've decided I want to make it kind of a pitcher plant garden. And uh, so I'm going to have to uh, transplant some pitcher plants from some of my other gardens into this one. And so uh, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to dig up one of these pitcher plants because this one is... Uh, these came from seed and they've gotten too big for here so I'm going to dig one of these up and move it over and then I'm going to come over here to this other bog garden I've got lots of pitcher plants that have started from seed in here so I'm going to dig a couple of these up and transplant them over so uh, let's just see how easy it is to do this uh, digging and transplanting Probably the most important thing when you uh, you transplant some of these uh, carnivorous plants is try to get as um, much of the root and soil intact, and uh, you have the, that gives you the best chances of these things surviving. So let's see what happens here. That was pretty easy. Um, carnivorous plants don't tend to have a lot of roots, but uh, this one does. Probably best to try to get rid of any weeds and grasses that are hanging on here. Um, I've got a bunch of Venus flytraps stuck in here, so I'm not going to get rid of those. Be as careful as I can here. Um, these 
bog gardens tend to be great places for weeds and grasses to get established and so you will have to constantly be pulling them up and it's always best to kind of pull them up when they're small now there's lots of Venus fly traps in here all right and some of this chyme weed too is in here which is just a horrible thing to get in your bog garden so you will have to uh, commit to weeding things out of here because carnivorous plants can't compete um, all right that looks pretty good so I've got one two three four five six seven about ten uh, Venus fly traps and a really nice pitcher plant so uh, let's uh, let's get this thing transplanted so uh, I think since this is going to be the biggest one of the group, I'm just going to plop it down in the middle here. And so create a nice hole for it and put it in there right at soil level. Oh wow, this is this is great here. This stuff is in perfect perfect shape for planting pat it all down pack it down tight all the way around and for this one we're good to go all right so I've uh, just lifted this hooded pitcher plant it's got a lot of weeds in it I'm gonna try to pull some of these weeds out of here well, it's easy to get to them. Let me just reiterate, bog gardens are great places for weeds to get established, so you got to kind of stay on top of the weed populations. Oh, there's a, there's a pitcher plant seedling in there. I'll put that in there. Well, there's a lot of them in here, actually. More pitcher plant seedlings. <laughs> Alright. Another pitcher plant seedling. Wow, okay, so I'm going to drop this one in. Right in here. <laughs> Back all around it just like the other one and now I've got all these pitcher plant seedlings now well, I think I'll, uh, I'll just I'm gonna put another pitcher plant over here I put three of them and then I'm gonna drop these seedlings in pack around them like this These will really take off. And there we have the second pitcher plant transplanted in. All right, here's my third pitcher plant that I dug up. Uh, let me just say, uh, Take the time to get rid of all the weeds when you're transplanting. All the extraneous plants you don't want in here, it'll be a lot easier to do this now than later. Oop, they want a, they want a Venus flytrap. Um, all right, this looks pretty good. So we're gonna drop this one, the third and final one. right here and pack it all in there tight got more venus fly traps than i know what to do with so I'll put them back in here and tamp it down a little bit these uh 
junkuses and things tend to get in here. And so, that's good. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably put some Venus fly traps around the edges here and uh, we'll be done. All right, most important thing about a successful bog garden is the plants need to be perpetually and constantly moist. Not flooded, but moist. So uh, remember I told you uh, put a little drain hole on the side over here, maybe about an inch below where the soil is. And then once you get your plants all in there, um, give it a light. Give it a light shot of water so those plants can kind of settle in and they won't dehydrate. They, uh, they need to get their roots established. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, this will uh, this will take off and you have a great, uh, great bog garden. So uh, final note, I know everybody doesn't have um, access to a lot of these plants like I do growing right here. Um, you can, uh, you of course can get a lot of these online. Uh, just make sure that uh, you're not buying plants from people who have dug these up in the wild. And uh, there's a lot of places around. I'll, uh, I'll put it on the explanation for this video where you can uh, order your carnivorous plants. Shoot, uh, you can even get Venus flytraps now at the, at the big box stores. So uh, good luck with your carnivorous bog gardening. And uh, subscribe to this channel if you like it. This is Jim Lucan of Jim Lucan Outdoors.